I've I have watched a couple podcasts of yours, and uh, I am not pandering to my lovely co-host who is helping me out by joining me here. But my I I know where this is going. My breakout <laughs> player is a Raider. It is Josh Jacobs of Raider Nation. <laughs> I think he's a locked and loaded top six, top five running back this year. I don't really see a way that he finishes outside of it. Um, He's our consensus running back eight, but that's for other reasons. Like that's, that's, I I am not responsible for him being consensus running back eight for the Sacco's rankings. Uh, ESPN (laughs) has him ranked. ESPN has him ranked down all the way at running back 11, which is atrocious. Um, The world disagrees with ESPN. He's currently going uh, ninth overall and as the seventh running back off the board. So again, the world's agreeing with the ceiling that Josh Jacobs had. The guy's 22, second season out of Alabama, 5'10", 220, like perfect size comp- body composition to be that three down bell cow. Has the hands, can do it. He was finished as running back 18 last season. He missed three games. He averaged, so he finishes as running back 18 with missing three games. He averaged 14 fantasy points a game, which was running back 13 production, running back uh, overall running back 13 finishing production as far as a points per game that he actually played value. Did I mention that he played like half of his games with a broken shoulder blade and was (laughs) Like literally going in, like he would score or get tackled and brought down, land on it, have to run into the locker room, get shot up with Novocaine, run out, and then run for another 80 yards. Like the guy was a machine last year. Um, He had five games over 100 rushing yards, and he had a sixth game at 99. Like the rushing yards are going to be there. That was, that's not a question going into the season. They have an excellent offensive line. He had 10 fantasy points in nine of 13 games that he played 15 in four of 13 games, 15 or more fantasy points in four of 13 games. So you're saying a third of his games, at least he's going to, he could go over 15. That's incredible production. And what did he lose to? Like, what did he lose out on? He lost, he lost out on, second and long third and long and like the hurry up offensive uh passing or a hurry up offense two minute drill one minute drill situations where when josh jacobs was off the field gruden got criticized for it all year and he said well we're gonna get him involved more. we're gonna get him involved more and towards the end of the season you saw that but then he was so unhealthy to the point that they couldn't put him in and mm. so and then he sits out and so you have deandre washington filling in for him who finished last year with 40 targets 36 catches and 292 yards he's gone see you later in kansas city maybe you can help out that situation (laughs) now that uh now that damien's opted out but that's we'll we'll get into that in a couple (laughs) minutes but DeAndre's gone. I'm not worried about Jalen Richard. I'm not worried about the th- third string running back from last year. They got nobody backing him up. Gruden set, spent all offseason saying Josh Jacobs is a three down back. Josh Jacobs is going to be in on third and down. He's not going to come off the field unless the guy physically cannot be there anymore. As mm-hmm. far as his efficiency, like... Go to player profile there, top, type in Josh Jacobs. As far as player efficiency, the guy was in top 10 in every statistical category. He was eighth in evaded tackles. He had 81 and averaged more than six uh, evaded tackles per game. He was third on the season in big runs with 13. He was third, but he only played 13 games. He averaged one big run a game. Um, he was ninth in yards created. He created 463 yards on his own, which is 35 and a half yards per game that the guy Man, created with race. his own skill. Like the guy is insane. His skill set is insane. Now he's going to be a three down running back. DeAndre Washington's gone. I'm not worried about Jalen uh, Richard. The guy to me, like if if I am drafting, like there are only a few people I will take over Josh Jacobs. Dalvin doesn't have a contract. I'm not sure. I 
I will probably take Dalvin over Josh, but it's with hesitance. I would love it if Dalvin, who's still working on a contract, gets one before the season starts. That would make, or, well, before I draft, realistically. But, like, <laughs> you have CMC, uh, Saquon, Zeke, Dalvin, and then, what, Michael Thomas? And then after that, it's like, man, Josh Jacobs looks good right now. Like he does. He doesn't have the questions that Sanders has. He doesn't have the questions that Drake has. He plays third down. Derrick Henry doesn't. I understand Derrick Henry's a stud, but like Josh Jacobs is a stud. And I just I really think that he could easily finish as a top five running back if he gets the, you know, much vaunted didn't get it last year third down passing down work i the guy has all the tools so yeah well, definitely not far off from what i think i have him right there in like six to eight range yeah. so i think he can definitely squeak in there and i'll toot his horn just a little bit more if i have to come know, on raider nation you know, lay it on me not, right he was the first rookie to run for 100 yards and two scores in his first game the only other work, or he was the second, sorry. The only other rookie to ever do that was LaDainian Tomlinson. So, 2-2. Two, two. There we go. He's the first Raiders rookie to ever rush for over 1,000 yards. 2-2. Two, two. Here we go. Uh, and not only that, like you had mentioned, he missed three games. Well, guess what? Only next to and only behind, I should say, Derrick Henry and Nick Chubb, did he garner or average more rushing yards per game. So you're looking at a guy who missed three games, was third in the league in rushing yards per game. That is insane. Yep. That is insane. Yep. And you look at where Nick Chubb and Derrick Henry are going. They're going before him, uh, which I guess you would say that, okay, that's perfectly fine because you just said he's third on that list. But I think the upside is there. Um, And a couple of other things I will mention, you know, with the Oakland Raiders – Oh my goodness. It, it's been a long time coming. There are tremendous changes. Yeah. Las Vegas. I just feel like the change of scenery, um, Gruden in his second year, there are things that are brewing. I do, however, see that this is Derek Carr's make it or break it year. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. You don't invest that much in a backup quarterback in Marcus Mariota if you don't plan to use him at some point or at least send a very powerful message to your QB1. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know if you remember this. They came out of the same draft class, and that's when uh, John Gruden used to do his QB grinders. Oh, yeah, right. Well, guess who he had ranked higher than – guess who he had ranked higher? He had Marcus Mariota ranked higher than Derek Carr. And then he goes out and gets Derek Carr six years later. So, I just think oh, that man. there are a lot of things bearing on the shoulders of Derek Carr. Um, Josh Jacobs is a direct result of that. Derek Carr needs to have a good year, which is, I talked about uh, in a previous podcast, Darren Waller. Oh, my gosh. Be on the lookout because if you need dependency and you're working for your life, you're going to throw to the guy who's going to catch the ball the most, and that's Darren Waller. But off topic. Um and, I mean, I just see him being very dependent on the run game as well to stay safe, manage his throws, and that is a direct correlation to Josh Jacobs' success. And hot take, if Mariota takes over, you know, at some point, if Derek Carr just can't keep it up, shits the bed. Ooh, apologize my language. All good. <laughs> but if he can't do it, I feel like Marcus Mariota is a better fit. Yeah, he's going to come in. He's going to scramble a little bit more, but it just makes that offense that much more dynamic. And you see a situation where Mariota is forced out of Tennessee thanks to the emergence and second coming of Ryan Tannehill. I think that's a very possible situation that we have here in Oakland as well. The second coming of Marcus Mariota. Derek Carr doesn't shape up and shut up. Changes of of scenery have been known to help football players be better at football so don't be surprised at all if if uh, Derek Carr struggles out of the gate that they mm-hmm. might eventually yank him um, but and coming from a Raiders fan yeah that no hard feelings there see you later Derek 